Hello mga ka-DJ! Ito na naman ang inyong lingkod. Hello, DJ RC! Chapter 6 I woke up without noticing that it was already 6 p.m. I fall asleep with Echo in his arms. I also forgot that I have a dinner date with John, so I take a bath, wear my sexy dress to mesmerize him, and put on a little makeup in front of me. Light foundation and red lipstick that matches my daring black dress. Perfect drop to catch a mouse. It looks so beautiful, he said, and smelt me on my neck and touched my soft and smooth arms. Here's the plan, baby, he whispered in my ear. His warm breath makes me a little horny and makes me want to rub his thing down there, but we have time for that. What is important right now is our plan. I will wait for you inside the car while you will go and meet him. He said, while looking at me at the mirror. His reflection is like a hungry demon craving for a soul. His sharp stare, his breath, is telling me that he needs me to feed him. He went closer to me and sang, the gave thanks to my ear, and it gave me chills, like a lost soul is ready to do other mission. Let's go now, baby. Let's accomplish a mission, he said while well, holding hands. We both leave the house. I sit in the driver's seat, and Echo hides at the back. Jen doesn't need to see him. That is why I am the one who will drive. I drive to Blue Avenue, where I am going to meet John. It is just 15 minutes away from home, and I saw him wearing white waiting for me in the dark. Be handsome. I call him with a flirty smile. Plenty my college in the dress that I am wearing is a perfect way to mesmerize him. Havana, he said with excitement when he saw me. Hop in, I told him, and I opened the car door and let him in. I checked the place and he guessed this is the perfect spot to do the mission. The street light is off, the place is dark, and no people are around. You look so good with that dress, he said while staring at me. Thanks, I said, still flirty. So, where do you want to go? I asked him with a smile. I know a dine in near here, he said. I guess it's only a 30 minutes drive, he added. At King's Food Hub? I asked him while looking at him, watching his expression and his smile. He's so excited to be with me, whether horny and nervous in the way he wet his lips before and after he talks. Yes, sir, he answered. Okay, let's go there, I said, and drove to King's Food Hub. I keep talking to him so he will not look back because he might see Echo had near the back. And when he reached the place, I let him go out first, double check, and I look at Echo still hiding at the back. Without a word, I already got what he said. He wished me good luck. I smile at him because I know this is going to be successful. The place is not that big, and only a few were eating. The air con is not that strong, it is just enough to make the whole place cold. And I love the smell of the grilled chicken coming from their kitchen. The waiters are so busy attending dinners. We occupy the table for two at the right corner near the glass window to see Echo into the car waiting for me. He orders food while I am waiting for him. It is his treat, of course, because he's the one who asks for a dinner date. King's Food Hub is a self-service food hub. You need to go to the order section to order your food and pay for it at the counter. Then, in just seconds, they will give you the food that you order. 
I look at him below his in the line waiting for his turn to order food for us. He's wearing black cricket trousers that matches his red t-shirt with the Ellen logo on it. Makes him look close to me. He's just smiling and it's so lovely for me. His eyes open the door to his soul. Tell me that he's been through a lot of things that make him suffer from the signs that he's perfect for the mission. I'm sorry, Princess, to keep you waiting, he said with a tray of food. Nah, no, I'm fine, I said. And he sat in front of me, putting the food that he ordered one by one on the table. There are two milkshakes, two hush browns, two bacon cheeseburgers, and two french fries. And I never expected the food because I thought it would be beef steak or butter chicken since we had a dinner there. But it is fine. The foods don't matter to me. Only the mission. It's too many, I said. For you to be full, princess, he said. Now don't call me a princess because I am an angel of that. I took him as a joke. While looking at him because I wanted to see his reaction if he would believe me or not. But he just looked at me and said nothing. I'm just kidding, I said and sipped on the milkshake flavored strawberry that he ordered. Yes, you are an angel, but not dead, he said. You are too bitter to be an angel of death, he added while looking at me. No tattoo, no piercing, and I bet you don't have vices too, he asked. Yeah, I don't drink or do drugs, except for smoking if I am tense. I answered while eating the hush brown. Let's make you tense, if you don't mind me ask. And take a bite of his bacon cheeseburger. I shook my head and answered. Nothing, just a simple girl thing I like. I look at him eating his burger while drinking my milkshake. Now that he's closer to me, I can hear his heart beat. It's beating, but it feels so empty. His voice sounds lonely, with regret in it. A big regret makes him empty, and he wants calmly. The Chinese character tattoo on his right arm, the woman and a child tattoo on his left arm, makes me curious. What is your tattoo on your left arm? I ask him while eating my burger. It's a Chinese character of hope. I decided to tattoo this to remind me that there's hope for everything, he said while looking at his tattoo. And how about the tattoo? I asked him while pointing to his right tattoo and gave him a new look. Oh, it's just what do you think? I don't have a wife and a kid. He defensively answered, This is my mom and me. It is my dreary tattoo for my mom. I want her to know that she's always remembered. He added, A tribute for my mom who died a month ago when I was in jail. I have a regret for not being there in time. That she needs me because I am busy with my hands. For my reason why I keep coming back to jail. He opened up and here we go. Here's the moment that I am waiting for. She keeps on reminding me about the company that I am with, but I didn't listen to her. I chose peers, vices, and women over her. And she's dead. I suddenly miss her and realize how important she is to my life. He solemnly said. That is why you joined the church, I asked, while still looking at him and eating my fries. Brother Ben helps me to change. He gives me a chance to put nothing in my life since I don't have a place to go. He helps me dead on my feet. He added and took a bite of his bacon. Just bring her again. Brother Ben is such an angel, I told him. He's a good guy. He agreed. The regret is still in my heart, but I am coping up little by little because rather than in the church, he added. Nice to hear that. No, I prove that brother Ben is an angel like me. Don't worry, everything will come to an end. Once you're okay, you will feel no pain anymore. I hold his hand, look into his eyes, and assure him that everything will come to an end. He held my hand and smiled at me and said, Thank you, you have a good heart. You're such an angel. I guess it's getting late now. I think I need to go, I said. Remembering the time, it's already 9 p.m. Oh yeah, sure. He agreed and took the last sip of his milkshake. I offered him a ride and told him that I didn't want to drive alone with my excuse. And he agreed. Is it alright if I drive you in Blue Avenue? I asked him. 
because it's late now and I don't want to go home. I excuse. Yeah, sure, he answered. We rode in a car, I turned on the radio, and we were left the place with echoes still waiting in the back. I looked at him in the mirror and whispered, Sorry for, the, for taking a while. At the same time, I drove to Blue Avenue. He didn't say anything. He just looked at me, thanked me, when he reached Blue Avenue, which is just 30 minutes away from King's Food Hall, with a bad guy from Billy Bullish played on the radio in the darkness of the place. I stopped the car, turned up the engine, and the headlight turned. Nobody could see what was happening inside. If I killed him already. I blocked the stare at me. The song gives things suddenly played in my head, and I was singing it quietly while staring at him, which gave him a little shiver. Are you okay, Helena? He asked me. I know it's scared now, and I can feel it the tone of his voice. And he's thinking if he will go down because I am scaring him, or he will stay and pretend that he is not scared. I look at Heiko, and he looks back too. He saw Heiko sitting in the back, which made him scared. I sit on his lap with a flowage on his face and put plastic on his head. I rub it out so that he could not breathe. He tried to push me but I could hug him. I rub his head with plastic and like a chicken. He's wiggling until he starts. He's breathe. I told you everything would end. I whispered to him. He's dead now. I hung the good friends with Echo. We close our eyes and pray to God for John's regret, and pains are not gone. We send him back to heaven. I go put him in the back seat, and he sits beside me with a bad guy still playing on the radio. We left the place with another mission accomplished. There's a checkpoint while driving home, and I get nervous. The police are visible, making each vehicle stop to check for this license. I don't know what they are up to, but they don't need to see John dead at the back. Don't panic, baby, don't panic, he said, and he removed the plastic on John's head and positioned John if he was just sleeping at the back. Smile, don't be nervous, it's alright, he added, while I slowly drove to the checkpoint. I trust Echo, I will not be nervous so that I will not panic. I took a deep breath because I stopped at the checkpoint. I put down the window and gave my license to the police. Who ordered me to put down my window and I let the other police check what was inside my car using the flashlight he was holding. I hope we will not notice John's dead body at the back, or else I will drive this car past to get away from them. I look at Heiko, who is sitting still beside me, is not nervous, so I don't need to be nervous either. After a few seconds, the police